the day has come and the celebrations for the 15 years of Assassin's Creed have finally started with a full livestream featuring many new announcements. So in this video we're going to have a comprehensive look at all of them and share some opinions about them. We're going to discuss the new reveals involving Assassin's Creed Valhalla, including the new and free roguelite mode called Forgotten Saga, set in the myth world of Niflheim, and the formal announcement about the last episode of Eivor's story, before moving on to all the other 15th year anniversary celebrations including several activities, the announcement of a special event in September dedicated to the future of Assassin's Creed, and some potential hints about a remake or a remaster of the original Assassin's Creed game. Plus there's more news about Assassin's Creed Origins, the Assassin's Creed Transmedia releases, the standalone version of the Discovery Tour and more. So let's just dive in. These are all the news coming from the recent 15 years anniversary stream. And we start with the Valhalla related content. This part of the stream opened with Jose Araiza, producer on the post launch of the game, discussing year 2, the released expansions and free content, and already at the beginning there was a teaser for part 2 of the Tombs of the Fallen activity, which will actually release in fall of 2022 and will conclude the Tombs of the Fallen and I dare say, Mastery Challenge story. The main piece of content connected to Valhalla that was announced here though was Forgotten Saga, which is a new roguelite game mode taking place in the mythical worlds coming for free to Valhalla this summer. So the team shared the trailer for this new game mode which was pretty much leaked recently by Andy Reloads and it involves Odin going to Niflheim or Hell, the realm of the dead, to face Hell, Loki's daughter, in order to find a way to resurrect his son Baldur and which will feature other familiar characters like Thor and Freya. Where this is going to take place within the timeline hasn't been confirmed yet, although because this is Odin trying to resurrect his son, as mentioned in the Animus Anomalies, this should be taking place after the Dawn of Ragnarok events and before the Toba catastrophe. In terms of gameplay, it's going to be a roguelite inspired game mode, meaning it's going to still be an RPG mode, but it's going to be defined by map exploration, enemies and mini bosses fights, a basic set of equipment made of 4 items that players will start with before finding more items as they go on, possibly procedurally generated levels and especially permadeath amidst other things, which is also why Odin in the trailer says that he's going to Niflheim as many times as it takes. So we're going to fight several enemies and we're also going to find a dragon. At last we got a dragon in Assassin's Creed. And at the end of each session, under specific conditions, every time our Odin dies, he seemingly will be able to gain a reward to use in the next session, making it a little easier for players in the next attempt. The interesting part here is that maybe, just maybe, we'll be able to use the Odin powers from Dawn of Ragnarok for free in here, even though that might clash with the concept of roguelite and permadeath, but we'll see. Finally, it was just a tiny mention at the end of the Valhalla part of the stream, but it's hugely important, Jose mentioned that the quote unquote last episode of Eivor's story will be released towards the end of 2022 as a free piece of content for all Valhalla players, meaning that Ubisoft has finally confirmed that we'll be able to witness Eivor's final moments as it was kind of hinted at by Darby McDavid a few weeks ago. You might have seen it on our social media already, the standalone console version of the Discovery Tour expansion for Valhalla had already been made available before the anniversary stream was launched, but within the stream and then on the official accounts it was also formally announced. So now players and especially academic establishments will be able to obtain this mode without purchasing the game itself, as it was the case for the Origins and Odyssey Discovery Tour applications. And speaking of Origins, the stream also featured a part dedicated to the 60 FPS update for Origins which was initially just a tiny bit of the first part of the presentation, which also featured an announcement of a free weekend from June the 16th to June the 20th, but was later dragged on for 45 minutes of gameplay of honestly an update that was released like two weeks ago, and while there was an interview with Jose Araiza to keep fans entertained, it still was too long of a wait for the transmedia presentation with nothing new to show. 
While we are on the subject of transmedia and before we move on to some bigger announcements and teasers, the stream featured 30 minutes of interviews with the authors of several pieces of released and upcoming products, and the presentation in itself was kind of okay, even interesting at times, though I was a little disappointed that a good chunk of the content presented here had already been released 2 months ago. I'm talking about the transmedia tie-ins to the Dawn of Ragnarok DLC for Valhalla, that is the Forgotten Myths comic, that honestly, sorry but there are better AC comics out there, and the Echoes of History Ragnarok documentary podcast, which is, like I said, a documentary, not an in-lore content, so you can check that out if you're interested in that kind of content. The transmedia products that I was more interested in though were the Edward Kenway webtoon comic and the Magus Conspiracy novel. As for the Edward Kenway webtoon, we know that it's going to release in Korea first and in the webtoon format which is made specifically for mobile devices and the story will follow Edward Kenway after the events of Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag and will take place in South Asia at a time where Edward will be older but apparently still a pirate looking for an adventure. So it's going to be interesting to see what took him there and how that fits with the actual continuation of his story in London as shown in Assassin's Creed 4 and the Forsaken novel, especially considering that the comic will seemingly also have a modern day part and main character. This webtoon will actually release weekly in quote unquote at least 3 seasons of around 50 episodes each, so this means potentially 150 or more weekly episodes which in turn will mean a planned run of 3 years for this comic which is pretty unprecedented. The other pretty interesting piece of transmedia that had already been announced was the Magus Conspiracy novel which is the first of a trilogy of books titled The Engine of History, which will span between the second half of the 9th century up until World War I. The first book will take place in London in 1851, so that should be a few years before Assassin's Creed Syndicate and it will involve several historical characters like mathematician Ada Lovelace and a plot involving the Assassins and Templars which I know it's kind of fresh at this point to have both of them in Assassin's Creed. The core of the presentation though were the celebrations for the 15 years anniversary of Assassin's Creed or AC15 in short that will be accompanied by a very interesting new logo that will support all the content tied to AC15 which apparently will last for months. These celebrations will include quote unquote surprises, unexpected collaborations, please don't have collaborations with The Rock some new community activities and a number of rewards, some of which, the Egyptian themed ones, have already been leaked weeks ago and are now already available on the Ubisoft Connect platform. A new website dedicated to the celebrations for the 15 years anniversary of Assassin's Creed has also been announced. It's called Assassin's Creed 15.com and it contains a lot of content and activities for fans to engage in the coming days and weeks, including weekly challenges for a chance to earn prizes and sections dedicated to the fans' favorite Assassin's Creed memories, artwork and craft. The website is also showing a new roadmap for the celebrations from now until September, where the team is going to celebrate each of the mainline games of the franchise in every week, one game per week starting from Valhalla and backtracking all the way to Assassin's Creed 1. These celebrations will include streams on the official channels, several highlights of fan creations, the possibility to earn prizes as we mentioned before and some challenges on the website. Speaking of which, one such challenge is that of the 12 Trials, which is pretty much an Assassin's Creed trivia quiz testing your knowledge of Assassin's Creed each week, where you need to log in with your Ubisoft Connect account and the more correct answers you get, the more chances you have to gain prizes. Another challenge issued by the team is the Creed Running one, where fans can participate in a speedrun marathon playing and finishing the Assassin's Creed games on live streams, though I'm not sure if that is also tied to some prizes. The site also provides a new AC15 fan kit where you can find the new logo along with several new pictures, key arts and other images tied to all the games of the franchise, but the main announcement concerning the AC15 celebration was a new special event dedicated to Assassin's Creed that is going to take place in September of 2022 where the team will unveil more information about the future of Assassin's Creed, and maybe that's where we might finally hear about a rift announcement 
announcement and possibly some more information about the Assassin's Creed Infinity platform that fans have been talking about for months now. So no Rift mentions, no Infinity mentions, no AC Remastered mention, or was there any? Cause a lot of fans, us included, did spot a number of hints, no confirmations of course, but a number of hints potentially leading to an announcement of a remaster or a remake of the original Assassin's Creed game. The most visible hint here is that at the start of the presentation where many of the Assassin's Creed traders were shown, only the one for AC1 was shown improved seemingly with a better resolution, a different saturation and more detail in general, as if this was taken from a remake of the trailer hinting at a remake for the game as well. Then as we mentioned earlier, the celebrations for AC15 will start with Valhalla and will backtrack all the way to AC1, which will be in the spotlight in September, exactly when the special event dedicated to the future of Assassin's Creed will take place, so which better timing to announce a remake or a remaster for Assassin's Creed. And finally, in the fan kit for AC15, Assassin's Creed 1 seemingly has a new logo with the text a Ubisoft's original, which is the new label that Ubisoft is now using for their new game related products, and might in itself hint at being used in the future for this potential remaster of Assassin's Creed 1. So fingers crossed, nothing formally announced here, but there's enough evidence to speculate at the very least, right? So that was pretty much the bulk of all the announcements that were shared during the new Assassin's Creed 15 years anniversary stream, their positive and negative aspects along with my opinions about them. And if you're interested in more live reactions to these announcements and the comments by our own community about them, I do suggest you check out our watch along of the original stream which you can find on screen right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in our next video.